So not the way you win is the multiple ways by which we come to help ourselves. And in, be, in doing so, it becomes the art of self-healing. So not the way you win includes, because our main role uh, as indigenous peoples is to maintain our, is our inherent responsibility is to continue on the language, the cultural gifts, the, the, the actions, the activities, the cultural practices. And not the way when is, is purely that. And coming together with, a, with an elder, um, with a traditional artist, um, um, a person who's skilled in, in many of the traditional art forms, together in that process, together you bring the communities. The cultural arts-based activities that we have engaged in is learning how to loom, learning how to, um, of course, bead, the beadwork process, but how to make moccasins, how to use nature's gifts, which is really the whole essence of not the way who in, is how do you use nature at its finest to maintain your well-being? In my years as a shelter worker, um, I recognized that there was a very high proportion of Indigenous women seeking services at shelter. And I, what I saw in these women was that they had to leave their homes, they had to leave their communities, they had to leave their culture. Um, behind and oftentimes fleeing to a different community for safety meant that they were very isolated once they left the shelter. One of the things that, that I was hoping would come out of uh, a group like Natawehuin was a way for the w Indigenous women who've experienced intimate partner violence to reconnect with their culture, to understand the richness of the history of, of their ancestors and to really begin to value that uh, and themselves as being part of that culture. When we started Natawehuin, an important piece of this was to follow principles of trauma and violence informed practice. So the facilitators as well as the elders and the domestic violence advocates and the research teams are all aware of the trauma and violence informed principles and that was an important piece of guiding the work both in the intervention as well as in the research. A not to way you in session begins with sitting down, sharing a meal, Whatever we have, we eat from the same pot type of idea. And then we start with a smudge, an opening prayer, um, a reflection. Everyone does, we do a talking circle. And then it begins with a teaching because there's always a grandmother teaching. Uh, we always inc include women's knowledge. There's always knowledge streams uh, uh, such as the um, um, moon teachings, the, uh, the four stages of life the uh, traditional parenting, many medicinal forms of, of the plant world, the animal world, how to make our lotions using, let's say, the bear grease, uh, maybe the tree sap, and ensuring that we have um, a muskeg tea, which is, the muskeg tea is, is so important because that's an all-purpose medicine and, and it, ha it creates a really wonderful sense of community. We were lucky enough to have the Nanatoe Wikamek Healing Lodge and Wellness Clinic here at the University of Regina for our Regina group. This, this room was specifically designed for group therapy and it was designed from an Indigenous and decolonized perspective. So we have different elements represented in this room from the rocks on the wall, we have a star on the floor, we have teepee poles in the ceiling. Then the women actually shared with us what it felt like to have different teepee poles in the ceiling. And they really were able to describe the healing elements of this particular space. We are thankful to the Public Health Agency of Canada for this investment because it not only allows us to offer Natawehuin in the three communities, but to conduct research into how it helps and the impact of the program on the women's health and well-being. We have a unique opportunity to research this project and then to share the outcomes with others who may be looking to do similar arts-based interventions in their own communities. So we're asking people about their sense of well-being, agency, 
connectedness, as well as other factors related to mental health. What we found was that the expressive art pieces allowed them to really hone in on themselves and process some of the, the traumas and the, the tragedies that they'd experienced and really look for that resiliency piece. When I started beading, I found that I really enjoyed it and um, it just relaxed me. Beadwork has made me um, come out of my shell more. I can uh, pass this down to my grandchildren. Uh, I have two sons now and they're, they have looked at my work and they have really found it interesting that I am doing this. And uh, for future generations. We do talking circles in, in most of our groups. So when you're new, you know, you just pass, you don't share a lot of information, but now our participants that are are actually helping the circle because they can talk about their experiences they can talk about things that were difficult for them and they come and share that and that's how talking circles work we see a really strong cohort and i would i would love in the future to find some additional funding to keep this particular group of women going in some way like the women's group is quite helpful i guess for like women that want to heal like their spiritual journey their healing journey I think like the music and the praying and just the different art is good for like to get that out and also just like soothing to soothing just to be with other girls like people that understand and have you know they're going through similar like experiences. It's been such an amazing experience on me mentally, emotionally and even physically. I've come from a background of trauma and alcohol abuse and drug abuse and being in this group has opened my eyes to be living a sober lifestyle, to even be traditional in my ways of showing my daughters how us women live from everything to smudging to taking great, to be grateful for such thing as the sun rising and the moon and the stars and the skies and giving thanks and appreciating all we have in our life and that's one thing this group has taught me and it has showed me so much and it opened my eyes and even new talents I have never beaded in my life and I've beaded myself this medicine wheel and I wouldn't have done this if it wasn't for this group I've been so grateful to be a part of.